which is one of the most fascinating young fighters in the sport, maybe the most fascinating, Dimitri Salida against journeyman Ron Gladden. Then Clarence Bones Adams against Kudia Spadas. Two other contenders in the 126 pound weight class looking for upward mobility. Both fighters believe they hold victories over the fighters who are in the ring in the main event because Adams believes he beat Ayala in their first fight and Espadas believes he beat Morales in a fight in which Morales was given the decision against him. Welcome back. We're going to turn our attention now to maybe the most unusual young figure in the sport, 20-year-old Dimitri Salida of Brooklyn, New York, originally from Odessa in the Ukraine. His Jewish father moved the family from Odessa to Brooklyn to get away from discrimination, particularly job discrimination, and the absence of economic mobility for his family in the Ukraine. They had a tough go of it for a while in Brooklyn, and Salida was beaten up on the schoolyard so frequently that he decided he wanted to learn how to fight. Larry, I guess he did a pretty good job of it so far. His old trainer says that he looks Russian, he prays Jewish, and he fights black. So he definitely has the possibility of becoming a crossover star if he continues on the path that he's on now. A quick word about the tradition in which he follows, the tradition for great Jewish fighters in our sport. Well, probably the two most famous, Jim, were Benny Leonard, the great lightweight of the teens and 20s, and then uh, Barney Ross in the 30s, who was one of the rare lightweight and welterweight champions. But really, the tradition he's coming from now is that Eastern European tradition of the fighters we see coming up now, including, of course, the Klitschko brothers in the heavyweight division. All right. Emmanuel Stewart, uh, as we talk a little bit more about Salida, I know that you've seen him. He's only 20 years old, Russian slash Ukrainian, Jewish. Within all that, of course, obviously white. This kid has enormous marketing potential if he can succeed, right? Especially in view of the fact that his favorite music is the hip-hop rap music. Absolutely he, he right. He loves Eminem and Tupac, so yeah. that, if that doesn't make things complicated. <laughs> but above all that, you have to be able to fight. And he can fight, and he's proven that he can fight by winning, first of all, the New York tournament and winning the Ray Robinson tournament is the most outstanding fighter. And he also won great amateur championships also. But he is the real thing and refreshing for our sport, too. What you're about to see is one of those fights which is not designed nor anticipated to be a competitive fight. It's a showcase. Let's look at the tail of the tape now for Salida against 35-year-old journeyman Ron Gladden. There's the 15-year age advantage, inch and a half advantage in height, three and a half adva inch advantage in reach, one and a half pounds heavier than Gladden. They weighed in over the 140-pound limit. Neither of these guys did much hydrating overnight. As you can see, Salida up unofficially only to 148. Gladden up to 146. 35-year-old Ron Gladden runs a company in Murray, Kentucky, which makes promotional items for college sports programs. He boxes professionally, he admits, for fun. We're kind of hoping he doesn't get hurt in this fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Dimitri Salida Ron Gladden fight is scheduled for six rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the sixth and final round. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Harold. And here's a look at Ron Gladden. Jubilant to be here, making what? Thirty-five hundred dollars tonight, Larry. Thirty-five hundred bucks. Uh, Biggest paycheck in eighteen pro fights. He wasn't sure whether this was going to be a four or six rounder. He did after that first fight, uh, so uh, he's getting that bigger paycheck. I don't know if being a four rounder or a six rounder. Uh, has any academic meaning because uh, he may not be able to last two or three rounds. And, and uh, Emmanuel Stewart, I see fans come to fights and laugh at guys like this, but the truth is, without the bravery and the spirit of people like Ron Gladden, this sport doesn't exist. No, you have to have them. Fighters have to have somebody that can build a record up on. And in this case, he said he's fighting because he enjoys fighting. It's fun to him. Well, he's going to get a close-up look at a fascinating prospect when he gets into the ring against Dimitri Salida. So here comes Gladden. And if we're concerned about him, he wouldn't tell his father that he was fighting on this card tonight because he didn't want his father to be too concerned. <laughs> 
You saw the ring experience. 18 fights, 58 rounds. Interestingly, when he goes the distance, he usually wins five of his six losses by knockout. Now here comes Salida. Because of Salida's ongoing observance of Orthodox Judaism, there are no fewer than 77 days on the calendar on which he would be forbidden to fight because of Jewish holiday reasons. In addition to that, there are various other restrictions. Not after sundown, can't watch TV on certain days, can't do this, can't do that. Through all of these obstacles, he's got a good career in front of him, Larry. You know, somehow that plays into his storyline from his point of view because overcoming those obstacles makes all of this just uh, a little sweeter for him. According to, uh, according to Salida, when he arrived in Brooklyn from Ukraine, unable to speak English, wrong shoes, wrong clothes, for that and a variety of other readings, he took daily beatings on the schoolyard. Then when he went into the gym to learn to become a boxer, of course, everybody else in the gym looked at him and said, what is this? And he had to prove himself again. So he's already had a baptism by fire, and now he tries to fight fire with fire for the rest of his pro career. Great show, Dimitri Salida. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, courtesy of Top Rank Incorporated and Miller Lite, the boxing action continues. The three judges assigned to ringside for this contest will be Al Lefkowitz, Art Lurie, and Glenn Trowbridge. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Tony Weeks. And now, four rounds of boxing. This is in the super lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black. He officially weighs 143 pounds. His professional record, 11 victories, including six knockouts with six defeats and one bout, even from Murray, Kentucky. Here is Ron, the gambler, Gladden. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trimmed with gold, and his official weight, 144 and one half pounds. He has a perfect professional record, consisting of eight bouts, eight victories, including six knockouts, originally from the Ukraine, but now living and fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. Here is the undefeated Dimitri, star of David Salida. Okay, here we go. Okay, you both received your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, be careful inside with your heads. Okay, if he goes here, it's okay. Anything below that's gonna be low. Right here is okay, anything below that's gonna be low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Any questions? Any questions? Let's go. Gladden started to a fight in a Fraternity Fight Fest at Southwestern Missouri State. That's when he started to like it. If I'm not mistaken, Ken Norton may have gone to M Southwest Missouri State on a football scholarship before well, he went into the Marines to learn how to fight. Guess what? Gladden's upper body does not look like that of Ken Norton. So <laughs> they worked out in a different gym if they went to the same university. Well, right, no. this, this should speak for itself. So, you know, if you like boxing, just watch the kid in the blue trunks and see what you think about his potential. Boom. I think Gladden will be lucky to last around. Yeah, but I was I was very impressed over with the young guy. Salili tried to place his punches once he got covered up. He didn't just throw punches recklessly. Body shots from Salida, thrown with power, good uppercut, perfect arc, short, yes. tight. All of his punches are short, and he keeps good balance at all times. Good body position. First knockdown. Three. First knockdown of what 
probably will be about as many as Gladden's willing to take or Weeks is willing to allow him to take. You all right? Yeah. You want to continue? Yes, sir. I'm giving you a chance. Oh. Yeah, that's the end of that. So we got to see a minute and 25 seconds of Dimitri Salida and Ron Gladden will go back to Kentucky with a bloody nose. Very impressive. Opponent was not that good, but nevertheless, his punches and the delivery was very, very, very beautiful. I, I've been in the gym at Gleason's to see him, Manny, when you look at the craft, the level of craft for a 20-year-old fighter. I mean, I'm no expert, but to me, he's sensational. Look at it. He's got beautiful skills, uh, balance, footwork, etc. We'll find out about him when somebody hits him on the jaw as he moves up. Uh, in class exactly which that's surely will happen the big mysteries are yet to be solved that's for sure but so far good yeah he threw 25 power shots in his minute and 25 seconds landed 18 of them which is a 72 percent connect percentage and that that means manny as you say he was placing his punches not just throwing them. yes very 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 well so as Salida poses for pictures for the ringside photographers we'll take another look from the handheld camera of the whole round and talk about the skills, the technique, the craft that he shows you here, Emmanuel. Well, everything he's doing, he's operating behind the left jab. Keeps his body very well balanced out in terms of his weight. Hands are in good position. And he's mixing up his attack. He sees his guys holding his hands up high. So he jabs up high to make him go up, and then he starts going underneath. Is his head too still, or is nope, that sufficient nope. head movement? No, no, he's got good head movement. So all of those punches are placed at different angles. And he goes right back behind the left jab. Finishers have great patience, and you can see, of course, this is only a minute into the fight, but Salida already with the man in trouble shows you no anxiety whatsoever. None at all, and I like his upper body movement. You can't see too much because of the fact that Gladden is not that busy, but he still moves his upper body very well. seemed able to see the right hand coming. Yeah, he was, you know, he was really like purposely throwing the punches to the head to make him cover up, and then he exploded to the body. Yeah. Hey, come to me. Come to me. As is you often right? the case yeah. with yes, um, good you young chance. prospects, the left hook is really the special punch. Oh, yes. As you see there. And that, uh, the man had his hands up, and he went between the gloves. So a tremendous show by 20-year-old Dimitri Salida. Easily, he runs his record to nine wins, no losses, seven KOs. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, following the second knockdown, referee Tony Weeks waves off the 10 count and immediately calls a halt to the bout. The winner by knockout victory at one minute, 25 seconds of round number one, still undefeated, Dimitri, star of David Salita. Final copy box numbers. And uh, the story here is how good is Salita? What did he do? So the numbers that matter are 26 out of 45 for 58 percent. As we said, in the power punch category, the landing percentage was over 70 percent. 18 out of 25. Look at that. <laughs> Gladden didn't get a chance to uh, show off his right cross. <laughs> yeah, no, it's left jab. No, it's left hook. Uh, let's go to Larry Merchant with Dimitri Salita. Thank you, Jim. Dimitri, yes. so what did you learn tonight? Well, uh, you know, this guy was a tough opponent. I mean, his record said that he was tough. He went four rounds with Dennis Holback before post battle four last week. So, you know, it was a good test for me. I really had a very good hard training camp. And, you know, hard work pays off. How would you describe your place now? Where do you think you are in your development? Well, I think that, you know, myself, Miguel Cotto, Ricardo Williams, we're all taking the same route to the same place. And Abdullayev. And Abdullayev. We're just taking different destinations. So, you know, I feel that uh, it's actually up to my trainers to grade me. But, uh, you know, I work hard and, and, you know, this is where I wanted to be my whole life. All right. There's always both enthusiasm to see a young prospect and also mixed in with some skepticism. Okay. The skepticism always is, well, let's see what happens when he really gets hit on the jaw and he has to deal with adversity. Have you had to deal with that anywhere along the way? Well, uh, you know, I had some, some uh, 
fairly decently tough pro fights. I had a lot of tough amateur fights. I had a lot of tough sparring matches in, uh, you know, in Brooklyn. So, of course, it's up to the critics to be critical because that's their job. But my job is to train and to win and to prove them wrong <laughs> when I fight on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> when will you be ready to fight again? It looks like um, tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, whenever my promoters... December and, 7th. December 7th. So, uh, you know, if everything is well, God willing, then it'll be December 7th. We'll look forward to seeing you once again. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Stay there. Jim? You might have seen his spiritual advisor, a rabbi named Israel Liberoff, right behind him. Well, you know, he keeps up with boxing, so he compared himself to American 140-pound prospect Ricardo Williams, whom we saw on the undercard of Barrera Tapia a couple of weeks ago, to Puerto Rican prospect Miguel Cotto, and to the Olympic gold medal winner in that weight class, Abdullayev of Uzbekistan. Now, I haven't seen Abdullayev as a pro yet. I've seen both Cotto and Ricardo Williams, as you have. How far along is Salida in comparison to those two post-Olympic guys? Well, these guys have had more experience professionally, but what I'm impressed about him, going back about his background, he was a good amateur boxer. And regardless of what, you know, you do professionally, because you can pick the opponents and move a guy carefully professionally, but to win major amateur tournaments is very difficult, especially in a city like New York. And also he won a United States amateur boxing tournament called the 19 and under, which is a very rough tournament. So you not only have to have some skills, but you have to have physical and mental toughness to win tournaments when you have to keep fighting winners after winners, night after night after night. So there is something there to work with. So he won the under 19s. He won two Golden Gloves championships in New York, but ultimately, because of the difficulty of scheduling himself for amateur competitions, mm -hmm. which almost all take place on weekends, he decided to go the professional route rather than the Olympic route. Will that delay his progress toward the top? No, I don't think so. I think he's important enough, I think, to boxing and to his promoter, Bob Arum, who's Jewish also, that he will arrange some kind of way to keep him busy fighting on a regular basis, regardless of what time he fights. All right. Well, let's uh, get ready now for the next of our undercard fights.